Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we want to talk about the Royal Champion. The Royal Champion is the newest hero in Clash of Clans. Well it's new because it's only one and a half weeks ago that he got um, published in the game and this means we will have a lot of different new things to come and I will show you guys today on how you can use her in the best five possible ways. I will combine her, combine her with your own strategies, which means we will see Yetis, we will see Hawk Riders, we will see Lalo, we will see Miners, Dragons, everything new and like everything new as a combination with the Royal Champ. And I will show you guys on how you can include her in your own attack style. So let's get started. I will think we are starting off with a really nice charge. The first one is going to be from Eve Check, and this is going to be a really nice Queen Charge Lado. Queen Charge Lado on its own isn't really a new strategy. This strategy was already around on Town Hall 12. So this means it's not new, but the usage of the Royal Champion is new to the game. On Town 12, you always were ro working with covering different entries with defenses which could take out the healers. For example, Inferno Towers, which were out of reach, with, for example, air defense out of reach, etc. With the addition of the Royal Champion, you can take those out now easily. For example, for Eve Check, he took out the complete upper left side with his Royal Champion, which means the Queen Charge, which he's doing now, is free to go because this Inferno Tower is not covering it anymore, which means his healers will stay safe and he's now taking out at least three Inferno Towers, which is crazy good if you're doing a Lalo attack. So this combination is our first one and it's going to be the support of a queen charge. You can obviously have like a queen charge and like do way later the Royal, Ch uh, the Royal Champion. That's possibilities as like a, that's a possibility as well. But we'll talk about that later. But for now, this is our first option with having the Royal Champion support the queen and taking out important buildings in the beginning of the attack. After taking out three Inferno Towers, Danny McQueen, the Eagle, um, a lot of Expos, two air defenses, etc. This base should be pretty easy for him. Like right? He took already out above 50% of the base and now starting off with his Lalo, which means the tunnel will be activated. He still has a free spell left. He still has a couple of haste spell lefts and this should be good to go. The Warden with the Loons are coming in. Mina, uh, minions are already in behind for a cleanup. Now the second Hound is coming in and this means this should be a pretty good triple for him. Nice first attack, but we have way more different strategies to go on how you guys can get your Royal Champion in full charge of the attack and like basically wrecking those bases which are out there at the moment. Like I said, the first one is going to be the support the queen charge and taking out important buildings on the flank which could have killed the healers or either the queen. And now we get into the second one. The second one is going to be the drag clone attack which I already um, uploaded a couple of days ago. This strategy is crazy strong and it's a really good combination of an easy attack strategy and um, well still a really strong strategy because you can find a lot of spammy strategies out there which are not as reliable but with this strategy it's super super effective against most of the bases. The first phase is always that you're taking out a huge part of the base with your blimp and like your electron beginning which means you are starting off with your blimp Two clone spells, you can sometimes use one as well, then a rage and then getting the dragon started. So far, you should not use your royal champ most of the time. There are some exceptions, but we're not talking about those. The next thing is going to be the dragons into the base. And you will see the pathing for the dragons. The electron took out this entire area and now we have the dragons coming into the base. But there's a, there's a huge difficulty um, in this one because after creating the path with the heroes and the electron, your dragons will get really deep into the base, which means they're taking a lot of damage. Most of the time you have on dragon attacks something standing in the end, especially air defenses behind storages or high HP, hit, um, high HP buildings are really, really big pain. So for exactly this reason, you have your Royal Champion now. Whenever you see, okay, this might be a defense which will be a little bit annoying for my dragons back end, you can take those out easily. For example, the Royal Chamber on this one is taking out the air defense with ease. During that, you see as well that the dragons are getting slowed by the explosion of the town hall. And there are not too many dragons left if you consider the air defense would be still standing and shooting. 
this attack would have been close. So with having the Royal Champion being saved for the last couple of seconds or la last couple of defenses, this is one of the strongest usage for her and you can combine that with different strategies. The Dragons are only one of those. Another one, and we will show a different replay for this, um, but another one is going to be with Yeti or Pekka Smash. We will see that in a second. But for now, we had the first one, the first use, which was the support the Queen charge. And the second one for now is basically saving the Royal Champion until the end and supporting your troops, which are most likely having not the power to power through the entire base. So you're just supporting the main troop. On this one, you can see it even better. On this one, we have a Yeti smash once again from Eve check. And let's check out how far the Yetis will make it and whether they could somehow triple their base or triple the base on their own. Now we can start off with the Roy, uh, with the um, one charge <clears throat> and then coming in with the Yeti and obviously your own king for the funnel. So we're starting off with the Raged Warden, taking out the upper Inferno Tower and then we can use the Earthquake for the core to open up basically everything. So the next one is go or the next step is going to be funnel everything and everything inside with your hero and then get everything started because you do not want to have your hero inside the hero or like the king since we have now four heroes i should probably call the name the king is most of the time stealing the healers which is not as effective you can now see in the game if you're clicking on the healers that the healing is different on troops and on heroes <coughs> You always want to have your healers switching on troops because that's the biggest benefit of the healers and um, healing troops over heroes. So let's check it out. We have the um, warden and everything coming in and now we have the royal champion. You can see as well that the yetis etc are dying really quickly because they do not they only have the power to get through the first part of the base. After that they are dying basically as the dragons. The dragons and the yetis are pretty similar in this one. We have them pushing into the core, clearing the core, but then not have the power to um, power through the rest of the base. With this being said, now the Royal Champion is coming in clutch because we have the Royal Champion working around the back end and working around the last couple of defenses remaining standing in combination with the Slammer to make sure to get the triple. It's like I said, the same scenario as you're, ta you're attacking with Pekka Smash, Yeti Smash or Dragons or E-Dragons, it's all the same style. You should always save your Royal Champion um, up to the finish to support your troops, which most likely were able to power into the core, but then slowly being stuck and start dying all over again. So you want to have the Royal Champion supporting your main push in the end. This is the second use, even though I showed to you guys two replays, this is the second use and the second best use of the Royal Champion. Just back and, and just as a supportive troop, a supportive hero in that sense. She is not as strong um, when you're sending in alone, sending her alone into the base, but if you have something supporting her, tanking for her, then she's super strong. In those dragon or in those Yeti smash attacks, we had the Yetis and the dragons tanking for her and this made her so powerful. So I would say, let's check out the next attack strategy, which is going to be Hawk Riders. It does not really matter whether it's Queen Charge Hawks, whether it's Kill Squad Hawks, whether it's Mass Hawks, it doesn't really matter. You always want to combine your Royal Champion with Hawk Riders. The reason for that is pretty simple. Both troops, or like the troop and the hero, are working the same, which means they're jumping over walls, they're targeting defenses with only one difference. The Royal Champion is attacking skeletons and the enemy heroes as well. Which means you do not need to take out the enemy heroes. We will see that in a second. With this Queen Charge, um, Bear is taking out not only the enemy Queen, he's taking out the enemy Eagle, the enemy Inferno Tower, the enemy CC as well, and the enemy King. Which means he took out two out of three heroes. Which means, once again, the Royal Champion, the enemy Royal Champion is still standing. And this means there's still a hero alive in this base which will wreak havoc on those attacking Hawk Riders. Hawk Riders cannot defend themselves, which means they're really easy to target for those defending heroes. But let's check out how he's using the Hawk Riders in combination with the Royal Champion because that's one of the strongest synergies right now in the game. And I think you all should use right now the Hawk Riders. They're super, super strong. 
So let's check it out. As soon as he drops the next rage, he will start with the Hawk Riders. So rage is dropped, Hawk Riders are started. Three drop Hawk Riders, everything's perfect so far. Warden in behind, Royal Champion in behind. And now you guys can see the Hawk Riders are protecting the Royal Champion. The Royal Champion is staying safe in behind and is getting rid of anything which cannot be targeted by the Hawk Riders except those useless trash buildings like storages, um, barracks, whatever. Now you can see the Hawk Riders are getting attacked by the enemy Royal Champion and your own Royal Champion will take out the enemy heroes, the enemy skeletons. He already got so much value. You will see in a second another skeleton trap popping up which could do so much damage to the Hawk Riders. But with having the Royal Champion in behind, they are protecting the Hawk Riders from getting completely demolished. So we have another um, ground skeleton popping up. We have the Warden ability getting used in a second. And the um, Royal Champion, meanwhile, is getting rid of every single ground skeleton trap. So this is one of the best usage of the Royal Champion in combination with the Hawk Riders. The reason why, why Hawk Riders work better than, for example, Loons is because the Royal Champion is ground, the Loons are air, which means cannons and ground um, expos, whatever, can target the Royal Champion and she will die kind of quickly. But with having the synergy in between of Hawk Riders and the Royal Champion, this means the Royal Champion will never die. So we have this with our third combination. The next one is going to be from me with a Queen Charge Minor Attack and this one is going to be different. Obviously, I could have just sent the um, Royal Champion in behind the Miners, but Miners already attack anything, so that's basically wasted. We want to have the Royal Champion for a different use. On this one, we want to have her creating a pathing. You guys will see in a second the idea behind the attack. So we're starting off with our Queen in front of the Town Hall, making sure that we can target the enemy Town Hall with our own Miners directly. That's, that's the goal of this Queen Charge at first. The next thing is going to be we have the king clearing the outside trash buildings which means our miners will stay inside the base. But let's get started with the actual plan. Now our queen is supposed to go inside the base taking out a couple of more defenses but the more important thing is the pathing which is getting created. I'm, an o I'm always talking about the pathing but what exactly is the pathing in the game? Like in the game? My queen will take out everything on the right of this pink line and everything on the left of the of the pink line is taken out by, by my own king. Now we have like a really small path in between of those lines with the miners. But you will see in the end everything is spreading really far like from the left bomb tower up to the right inferno tower everywhere my miners could go which means that would spread a lot my heal space would be not as um, as effective anymore so let's see how the royal champion can help. Once again, we're not using the Royal Champion too early, but the Royal Champion is coming in as soon as the Miners are getting started. Now we can mark once again what the Miners can see. They are going through this small, small LA now with this marked in pink. And the Royal Champion, on the other hand, is taking out two um, Wizard Towers, a Bomb Tower, Inferno Tower, and creating a perfect pathing for our Miners. Which means the combination of the Queen Charge and the combination of the pathing which was created by the Royal Champion was perfect for Miners. This is working with Dragons for example as well, but you can combine it as well with for example Lalo when you have a certain area of the base which is really heavy to, um, to Lalo. For example like Air Defenses, Wizard Towers and Inferno Towers, stuff like this. So this, this is one of the stronger strategies as well. But it's not as easy to use, so you guys should keep that in mind. So we had so far the support the Queen Charge use. We had so far the basically support at the back and uh, use with Pekka Smash, Yeti Smash and Dragons. Then we had obviously the synergy in between of Hawk Riders and the Royal Champion. And now we had the funneling purpose or like the pathing purpose in the base itself. Now let's talk about a different thing and that's the Royal Champion Charge. And I think that's still one of the... Um, strategies which, which have to be worked on because I think it has potential but not this exact 15 healer strategy because I think as soon as defenses are getting maxed you will struggle against those maxed out bases with this strategy. But still I think this idea behind that has a lot of potential like the idea of adding healers on the royal champion because the royal champion can jump over walls, can target only defenses which means the important buildings are getting taken out I think the idea behind that is really good and I think it deserves a spot on my top 5 list. 
Let's check out the attack since this is not the max base or anything. It still looks super fun and it looks really OP. So I got my ram into the base with taking out most of the stuff. My queen is in um, on the hound. Meanwhile, now my CC should take out the enemy um, town hall. Meanwhile, my queen is saying healthy and my healers as well. So, so far it's looking really good. The next thing which is going to be, I should add my warden somewhere to support my queen. And then on the same time, I should add my royal champion somewhere because otherwise my queen is getting too much damage. Those three different charges in combination together is a really strong thing. But like I said, it's mostly all about the queen charge and your royal champion supporting her. So it's kind of like a different version of the number one um, purpose with just supporting your queen charge. But this one, the royal champion is a charge on its own, which means it's super powerful. So my queen got through the core. Now let's add the royal champion to support her and take out the inferno tower, the um, scatter shot, etc. To make sure that my queen is staying alive and is staying healthy. Otherwise my healers will die, my queen will die and this attack is over. So I have to support her with adding the royal champion. Now everything is coming together. All of the three heroes are working together now and are basically like getting through the base, pushing everything um, up to the limit. And this is the last usage of the Royal Champion with having her on its charge, like on its own. Like the Royal Champion on her own is really powerful. So if you can add that up as a queen or like as a charge, not as a queen charge, as a, as a Royal Champion charge, then it's working really well. So. Those were my top five usage of the Royal Champion. I hope you guys liked this episode and I hope you guys liked the idea of the Royal Champion. If you guys have anything else for the Royal Champion or how you guys use her, make sure to let me know in the comments. Otherwise, we will see you guys tomorrow in the next video. And remember, tomorrow at Friday, 6 p.m. CET is going to be the next English stream. See you guys until then and bye bye.